Can we get a haunted house movie where the white people are smart enough to leave the house for a change? Just once? Just once? So Sinister tells the story of a true crime novelist who finds a collection of snuff tapes that have a tie to a pagan deity. Welcome everybody to another patron sponsored review. This one is brought to you and sponsored by Corey Costa, one of my loyal patrons over there on my Patreon page. If you guys are curious what my Patreon page is, it's actually a crowdfunding source. It's the best way and the most rewarding way to support this channel. You have certain tiers that you can subscribe to and get uh, exclusive privileges such as this one which is a review request so check down in the video description box below please for the link to my patreon page if you enjoy what I do if you enjoy this channel I want to find out a way that you can interact with it more support it and maybe even influence what I do on the channel so check that link down below as well and for those of you that may not want to join my patreon another great way to support this video and this channel is simply hit that like button if you enjoyed watching it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more with that all being said, let's talk about Sinister. So funny enough, Sinister is one of those movies that every single time that I think about it, I don't think about the movie first. I actually think about a YouTube channel that I have always been a huge fan of. It used to be called Spill.com, now they're known as Double Toasted. A lot of you guys probably know what I'm talking about. If not, go ahead and check out their channel. They're very entertaining guys, but Back when they were Spill.com, there used to be more panelists, more hosts on the show, and one of them was C. Robert Cargill, who is the writer of this film. He was also the writer of Doctor Strange. And at the time, it was a really cool thing because I was a follower of this site, I was a follower of this YouTube channel, and one of the Spill guys was actually getting the movie made. So whenever I went to go see this, that was my main draw to it, was let's see what Carlisle, what he was known as, can do as a writer, and let's see what this movie Sinister is about. So. Fun little fact, has nothing to do with the movie whatsoever, but I like giving these little personal ties. That is what I think of when I think of Sinister. Now, as far as the movie itself, this is a movie that I've always seen a lot of praise for in the horror community. I think it could have been a pretty successful, pretty noteworthy franchise, but the second one really screwed the pooch. But nonetheless, this original film, Sinister, seems to have a pretty positive reception in the horror community. And while there are things about this movie that I like very much, Overall, it's a movie that frustrates the living shit out of me for some of the things that I feel like it could have been much better without. So with all that being said, let's get into the positives regarding Sinister. And the first thing is that I think the actual snuff films that Ethan Hawke's character comes across, those sequences where he's watching them, those are genuinely unnerving, those are genuinely creepy, and the way that they not only shoot these scenes and not only the creativity, the level of creativity that they have for these different kills where one family's drug into a pool that are kind of chained to some lawn chairs. You have another one where a lawnmower gets run over people. You have another one where somebody is, you know, tied into a car and they throw a Molotov. Very creative kills. And I like that. I love the carnage candy. You guys know I do. But the sound design. The sound design, the noises, the background, echoing, the music that they put into these sequences chills me to my freaking bone. And that is something that not very many horror movies can do with just sounds. I mean, I could literally just not even look at what's going on on the screen whenever these little snuff film sequences are happening and just listening to the music in some of these scenes. Yeah, that shit's fucked up. It could easily have just been a small little gimmick that this movie threw in for the sake of like, you know, callback to old archaic technology, you know, some of the throwback flavor that a horror film wants to go for once in a while, but they are genuinely the standout scenes in these movies. You think these are serial murders? I don't know. The first one I found dates back to the 60s. And they're the scenes that evoke the most terror, the most, you know, edginess, the most tension. It's the scenes that really deliver the tone that they were going for with this film. Beyond that, I love Ethan Hawke. He's honestly one of my favorite actors. Every single time that this dude shows up, he delivers. He's never necessarily been like, you know, A-lister, on the front of posters, getting roles left and right. A lot of times he shows up as a side character or kind of pops up into a movie as a little bit of a surprise, but this is one where he does lead it. He leads it well. And his character is very interesting. You have this guy who had a taste of fame where he was a true crime novelist that had this hit number one bestseller book. And now 10 years later, he's trying to kind of rekindle that fame. He's trying to basically force a hit 
out of himself by moving his family into the actual crime scene, by moving his family into a house where people were hung from their necks in the backyard to try to hammer out this novel, to try to taste that fame once again. And he's an interesting kind of character because you see his family and how his choices is affecting them very directly where you have a wife that's like hysterical damn near the whole movie you have a son that's having night terrors you have a daughter that's drawing dead girls on the wall and he is so desperate to retaste that fame he's so desperate for the limelight that he kind of blocks all of that out kind of dismisses it all as oh these are just you know moving pains and he inserts him and his family into the worst situation possible to try to rekindle his past. And it's an interesting theme that they explore through this character, kind of the obsession of fame, the obsession of, you know, reliving the past. Has my limelight faded? Was my five minutes, my 10 minutes of fame 10 years ago, or was that just the first flicker of it and I can find it again? That whole quandary that's in his character's head, you kind of go along for the ride with him. You understand him to a degree, you're angry at him to a degree, and it's just a complicated character that Ethan Hawke delivers really well and is a really good character to have as the focus for a movie like this. And while most of why I enjoy it is because of the way that they carry this story with the character played by Ethan Hawke, I do like the overall setup, the overall hook of this film, which is the true crime novelist who finds these snuff films up in his attic and he's trying to tie them all together and solve this mystery and eventually it leads to some very supernatural places. I think it's an interesting idea and that's the, you know, the pitch that Carlisle gave to Scott Derrickson that made him go, I want to make this movie sinister and that's why we have this film is because that was such a cool general idea that they brought to life in this script and like I said, I think it could have been a really interesting franchise that because of how bad the second one is, unfortunately we'll probably never get. Now my one mixed aspect for this film is one that might be a uh, spark for debate down in the comments section, and that's the antagonist character of Bagul. I like the name, I like the overall look of the character, I think that there's spots where they utilize him that's very creepy, like where he's, his reflection's in the pool and the camera slowly kind of pans and shows pieces of him and you're like, what the fuck is that thing? But at the same time, when they show the full costume of Bagul, I think it looks very cheap, like at the end it looks like he's got like painted gloves or something weird going on. And I don't think that they utilize the character to his fullest potential. If they're going to go for this supernatural edge, you know, from the middle of the movie all the way to the end and try to make this horror icon out of Bagul, I feel like they should have been able to do more with him and they should have put more focus on Bagul himself if they were going to go that route. If not, I'm actually of the opinion that if you're not going to go there, this movie might have done even better if there wasn't like a forced horror icon in here. If there was just some kind of a cult or if there was some kind of a supernatural tie to this house or something simpler besides this pagan deity that they're obviously trying to make some kind of an icon. Now moving on to my negatives, the biggest issue that I have with Sinister is that this is one of those films that decides to tell you instead of showing you. There is literally characters that are inserted into this movie. Not one, but two that are inserted into this film simply to exposition dump. You have this little doofy deputy sheriff or whatever the hell he is that comes in that tries to be cool with Ethan Hawke and be his inside man and tries to help him with this investigation that only comes into the picture to give him information. And then you have Vincent D'Onofrio's random ass character who's playing like this professor, this you know expert on pagan deities who has little Skype chats with Ethan Hawke's character whenever he needs to exposition dump a bunch of explanations for what's going on. The first time is like, oh, yeah, I looked at your tapes. Uh, it's about this guy, Bagul, and he eats children, and uh, he does this, this, and this that's gonna be relevant to the plot for the next 20 minutes. Bye, Ethan Hawke. And then you get to the end of the movie, and he's like, oh, hey, some more information. You know, I figured out that, you know, that snake that you saw earlier is because it's in this little drawing, and there's also a scorpion here, so see how everything ties back together, and I'm gonna leave just before I give you the most important information of, of all because, you know, we have to have a climax. Bye. The symbol is associated with a pagan deity named Bagul. He consumes the souls of human children. I don't like movies that do that. I feel like there's ways when you can effectively tell this story and you can have these little twists, these little reveals, these explanations that you can show us. You can have Ethan Hawke discover in ways where we discover along with him. Don't just have a character call him and give him and us all of the answers out of the blue. To me, that's lazy storytelling, that's lazy scripting. And while it doesn't 
destroy the movie. It doesn't make it to where I can't watch it. It doesn't kill the last half of the film. It just feels lazy every single time that I watch it. I'm like, why is Vincent D'Onofrio in this movie? I love you, Vince. I love you, Kingpin. But you serve no purpose other than script convenience. I also feel like this movie has some very cheap and lazy scares. I think that the snuff films is creepy. And I think if they would have leaned more into that type of tone throughout the entire film, I would cherish this movie a lot more. But in between the snuff films, you also have these little supernatural, typical cliche jump scares. You got the one kid who's having fucking night terrors and he crawls into a box for some reason. And when his dad comes, he does this little backwards crawl. And then you have the ghost children that are walking around, which I've always thought was a really goofy scene. <laughs> Doesn't creep me out at all, just the fact that they're like in slow-mo and they're quiet, it's just, to me, this is not scary. This is distracting as shit. And even when he goes outside to get something and there's a dog, there's a random dog. It, just things to me that are cliche horror. When this movie has really great ideas that rise above those cliche generic horror films, then you throw that in, it's just, pick a lane. Are we going for innovation or are we going for the cheap, you know, shit that we've seen a thousand times. And going along with that, this isn't like a separate negative, but it's just something that annoys me every single time I watch this film. What is the whole thing with this son having night terrors and climbing into boxes and you know, going backwards and shit? Now, I'm not an expert on night terrors. If you are, is this shit that people that have night terrors actually do? But it's just strange to me. It, it would have made more sense if they had wove that into the plot somehow. Like maybe Bagul was trying to torment this kid and because he has night terrors, it kept fucking it up and you know, he couldn't get through to him. So he goes to the little girl in the end of the film. And maybe that was, that could have been a nice little twist where it felt like the older son was being tormented and was gonna end up being the, the chosen one, the one he was going to eat or consume at the end. And then you swap it and pull the rug out from under us in the third act. I'm just spitballing here. And my final negative, which admittedly is not this film's fault, it's not the director's fault or the writer's fault, but it does tie in with my experience of Sinister. The marketing for this film gives away the entire fucking movie. I was so excited to see this back in, what was it, 2012? And I remember I watched one trailer, I think they only debuted one trailer at the time, and the trailer literally is beat for beat the entire movie crammed into two minutes. Like it shows everything. It shows the jump scares, it shows Bagul, it shows the final act of the film, everything. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, don't watch the trailer. <laughs> but for me, my experience for this film has always been numb and nowhere near what it could have been. There could have been some genuine surprises in this movie that would have made me like it so much more in retrospect, but because the marketing blew the entire plot point of every single act of this film, my enjoyment of it has always been held back because of that. First time in theater, I saw everything coming because the trailer showed me everything, and I was like, yeah, everybody that's you know giving this movie a lot of praise, I see it, unfortunately. I already knew all this shit going in, and on repeat viewings, I never have like that nostalgia for my first viewing experience. It's basically the same experience every single time that I watch it. So overall guys, I do enjoy this film. I do like it and I do think that there was a lot of potential to improve upon this original one with some sequels, but unfortunately that wasn't the way that things went. But for me, it's a movie that has great ideas and the execution just does not quite match the greatness of the ideas. The execution is mediocre at times, very good at times, and damn right shitty at times. I think that the story has a lot of conveniences, a lot of lazy writing. I think that there's some opportunities to make Bagul a big icon. Otherwise, you should just let them out of the movie completely and went a different direction. And unfortunately, the marketing spoiled every single twist that this thing had in store for me. So it's a movie that I like. I've never been overly fond of it. So if you're a fan of supernatural thrillers, if you like Ethan Hawke, or if you wanna see a movie that definitely has great ideas that maybe will land better for you, especially if you haven't seen the trailer, check out Sinister, find it online, and stream it. So what do you guys think of Sinister? Did you have the same experience as me where you feel like there was much more potential than this movie actually reached? Or do you feel like this is a horror classic and I'm being too hard on it or you just had a better experience than me? Let me know down below in the comment section and we will talk some Sinister. Thank you so much, Corey, for your support and thank you for this very cool 
request. Uh, I had a lot of fun revisiting this movie and talking about it. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on your way out if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. And for now and as always, guys, remember, opinions are like assholes, but it doesn't mean you have to be.